Hey everyone, my name is Sophie from Sophisticated Organization. Today we're gonna to be doing some holiday meal prep. Now I know with the holidays quickly approaching, it can be difficult to make meals, especially when you might have guests coming over or you have to go somewhere. So all of these meals are meals that you can make in advance. You can stick in the freezer. They sit in the fridge overnight, whatever the case might be. There's some breakfast, dessert. I have a lunch or dinner option. And I'm really excited because I'm also gonna be cooking with my Caraway pots and pans today, giving you guys a little bit of an update on how they're holding up. I have a little bit of wear on tear on them, so I wanna show you that. I also want to let you know how much I'm still loving them, how I'm cleaning them to maintain them, as well as unboxing some of Caraway's bakeware because with the holidays we all do a lot of baking at least I know I do so I just got their bakeware and I want to thank Caraway for sending it to me as well as for sponsoring today's video but before we get into that I do want to mention that I will have a link in my description box so you can take advantage of Caraway's best sale of the season and get up to 20% off using my link in the description box there's no discount code or anything it'll be automatically applied when you shop through my link so you can get the pots and pans you can get the bakeware they have a tea kettle now they even have food storage containers so lots of different options they would also make a really good gift for anybody who loves to cook in your life so with that let's jump in and unbox the bakeware because i'm so excited to see what it looks like I was so excited to get another box of goodies from Caraway. You guys know I have my pots and pans and love them. I've recently gotten their food storage containers and now I'm opening the bakeware set, something I've been lusting over for a long time. This is an 11 piece set. The same thing as the pots and pans, it is a toxic free ceramic coating that comes in a bunch of different colors, but I always like the original colors. I just like the set that I'm building with all of the matching Caraway goodies and how it's all perfectly organized because this bakeware set comes with the organizers. You can also buy some of these as separate. So if you are somebody like me who bakes a lot and you want a few extra little muffin tins, or if you bake cakes and you want some extra cake pans, you can buy separates. Or if you don't want the whole set, you can buy separates as well. I have to say the baking sheet with the rack and the half baking sheet are some of my favorites out of this whole set. The half sheet I love because it actually fits in my refrigerator and freezer, which happens a lot in baking recipes. And then like I said, it fits in the organizers that have a magnetic closure at the front so they don't fall out. On to today's first recipe, I am making a loaded breakfast casserole. This breakfast casserole is, I think, the best one I have ever made. Jim and I both loved it. It is huge. And the reason I'm including it in today's video is because it sits overnight and then you bake it in the morning. So if you're planning on having any guests for the holidays or you wanna have a special Christmas breakfast maybe, but you don't have to wake up at the crack of dawn to make that breakfast, this is gonna be the perfect make ahead meal. So you'll see I started by crisping up some bacon. You can do eight to 10 pieces, the recipe suggests. I cracked eight large eggs into my mixing bowl, added two and a half cups of whole milk there. I'm also putting a pound of sausage into one of my caraway pans that I'm cooking with and getting that sausage cooked. Well, I continue to mix up my eggs and add in some of the spices. So you'll need a teaspoon and a half of ground dry mustard, a teaspoon and a half of kosher salt, a teaspoon of dried parsley, a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, and finally a quarter teaspoon of paprika. The next part of this recipe is to take 12 ounces of any sort of bread. It does recommend Italian bread, but like a French 
baguette or anything like that is perfect. Just cut it into about half inch pieces or so. It doesn't have to be perfect. And you're going to spray your nine by 13 pan with a little bit of cooking spray, toss that bread in there. And then you are going to top that with your breakfast sausage, chop up your bacon and add your eggs as well. Now with all of the sausage there and the bacon chopped, I put that on top of the casserole. I'm also adding in Swiss cheese. The recipe does call for Gruyere cheese. I didn't have it. Swiss is a great alternative. And I'm also putting about a cup, I would say, of shredded cheddar and putting that egg mixture on top and letting it soak through the bread. Again, let it sit overnight in the fridge, pop it out, bring it to room temperature, preheat your oven to 350 and bake uncovered for 40 to 45 minutes. I'm taking a quick pause here to do a bit of cleanup and I wanted to share more about the cleaning of my caraway pots and pans. So I have still been hand washing them and I think that's part of the reason they have held up so well. I really use any dish soap whatsoever. I think right now I have Dawn in this little thing um, and just give it a nice scrub around. And because of the ceramic coating, everything just kind of wipes away. I don't know if you can tell, um, but it just wipes away. I haven't had a ton of issues on the bottom side, just a little bit of discoloring, but it hasn't affected the performance of the pots and pans at all. You can take some baking soda or soft scrub like I've shared before. A non-abrasive cleaner is better. And while baking soda and soft scrub do have a little bit of a texture to it, it is soft enough to use on these that at least I haven't had an issue. Um, same with the scrub daddy. I've had questions about that too. And especially when you warm it up with warm water, it gets really nice and soft um, and doesn't damage your pots and pans. So really either way, just hand washing has helped promote the longevity. And that is what they say you should do with their pots and pans. Don't stick them in the dishwasher. Um, just hand wash them. So I'm going to clean this up and we'll get ready for the next recipe. So I'll show you the part that matters. The inside has no scratches, no discoloration whatsoever. The outside is the only place where I have a little bit of those marks. And you saw a lot of them did go away, but some of them are still on there. It really is pretty minimal for the amount that I use these pans. You guys know how often I cook, so I don't think this is bad. And any pots and pans are gonna have some marks on the bottom, but look how clean that inside is. Perfect and perfectly still nonstick, which is what matters. So this next recipe, I am also using one of the larger caraway stock pots to boil some potatoes because I am making gingerbread cinnamon rolls that yes, have mashed potatoes as an ingredient. I thought it was kind of strange, but they were delicious, perfect for the season. And another great thing to bake in advance, I'm gonna show you a couple of ways that I am going to prep these for having them in advance. But first let's get to making that dough. So in a large bowl, add a cup and a half of flour, followed by three teaspoons of ginger, a teaspoon of cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of cloves, and one package of active dry yeast. If it looks like I'm adding more in here, 
here it's because I am I did double the recipe like I do a lot of times but if you're feeding a crowd it's an easy one to double or if you want to save more in your freezer you can do that as well next up you're gonna take your saucepan heat three quarters of a cup of milk your one cup of mashed potatoes and a third of a cup of butter then add in a teaspoon of salt and a third of a cup of molasses You want it to be just warmed, about 120 to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Then you can add this mixture to your flour mixture. So just add slowly and mix until it is nice and smooth. And then add in about two more cups of flour and stir it as much as you can. I also realized I almost forgot the eggs, so don't forget to add in two eggs to your mixture as well. And drink our chocolate by the fire. Cause all I want is to spend this day with you. Let me give you a Christmas a moment will fill. Owen woke up from his nap, so Jim brought him down, and Owen always loves to see what I'm doing when I'm cooking, so I grabbed him and gave him a hug and a kiss and showed him that I was making some cinnamon rolls, but let me tell you, this dough is thick, and it is hard to stir it with one hand. As you can see, I'm struggling, so I took a break and played with him and then came back to it to mix up the rest of the dough. Once it's as mixed as you can, you're gonna have to put it to a floured surface and knead it a bit, probably about three to five minutes until it's nice and smooth. Then you can shape it into a ball, place it in a greased bowl and cover and let it rise until it's doubled in size, which should take about an hour. So I needed to clean my bowl out. I didn't want to dirty another bowl. Might as well just clean this one out. And then I am going to just spray it with some cooking spray and put the dough right back in there. Cause all I want is to spend this day with you Let me give you a Christmas A moment we'll fill with love and joy mm -mm, It's a beautiful kissing on a mistletoe baby with you I don't need any presents As long as I spend this day with you mm -mm, It's a beautiful kissing on a mistletoe baby with you My dough has now doubled in size. It's been about an hour, so you can punch that dough down or pop it out of your bowl, put it back onto a lightly floured surface, cover it and let it rest for another 10 minutes. In the meantime, I was going to get started on the filling for the cinnamon rolls. And the filling for the cinnamon rolls is a half cup of packed brown sugar with the rest of the remaining ginger, cinnamon, and cloves. Finally, I split my dough into two because I doubled the recipe again, but you can roll your dough into an 18 by 12 inch rectangle. I did grab a ruler to help me out here to make sure I was on the right track and was getting it about 18 by 12. Of course, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then you can spread the surface with your softened butter and pour the mixture over top of your brown sugar, cloves, ginger, and cinnamon. Make sure it's nice and even. You can leave about an inch of the end of it unfilled so you can start rolling it as tight as you can from the long end so you have a nice long log and then you can cut it into 12 equal slices. Thank you. 
You can always use dental floss. That's a fun little trick to cut your cinnamon rolls. I do that a lot of times. Here, I think I was just too lazy and used a serrated knife, which was perfectly fine. And then I cut it into, again, those 12 slices and I arranged it into another one of my caraway pans. These things worked so well for baking. I probably could have spread them out a little bit more as I arranged them just so they had a little more even space to rise for that third rise because you're gonna cover them one more time, let them rest, and they should double in size again for about 30 minutes. You'll see with the rest of them, I'm putting them into my super cubes. I saw this on the super cubes Instagram that they used their cubes to make cinnamon rolls in advance. There's two different ways to make your cinnamon rolls in advance. First, you can pretty much fully bake your cinnamon rolls. Just do it a little bit shy of fully baked and then stick them in the freezer. And you can pop them out of the freezer and stick them in the oven when you're ready to warm them. Bring them to room temperature first or you can always let them sit in your refrigerator overnight and just bring them again out to room temperature before you bake them. I did that last Christmas, just put my cinnamon rolls in the fridge, had them in advance. You can even do it in the freezer raw, bring it to room temperature and bake from there as well. So either way should work. It's really up to you and your preference. You'll see I am making the spiced brown butter frosting. So I'm leaving all of the ingredients that are going on here. You'll see it is pretty thick. I like a little bit of a runnier frosting and you'll see how much trouble I had spreading it on there. So I did end up adding a lot more milk and making it a pretty runny frosting. So I would add much more than the two tablespoons of milk this calls for if you want it to spread a little easier and just drizzle it right over your cinnamon rolls. I had to try a bite. They were so good. Definitely make this recipe. For an easy prep ahead meal, our main course, I had to make a soup. They are the easiest things to make for a crowd, make in advance. You can store them in your freezer, pop them out when you're busy for the holidays or use it as a dish that you could serve during the holidays. So this is a slow cooker, creamy gnocchi soup. I like that it's a slow cooker meal, so it's minimal prep. All I'm doing is getting my celery and my carrots all chopped up there. It should be about three medium carrots, three stalks of celery, but I'm winging it a little bit because you'll see I'm not even using actual carrots. I'm using already pre-cut carrots, so I'm just estimating here. And then I'm also gonna do an onion. It calls for half a medium onion, all chopped. Stick that into your crock pot, followed by your chicken, which should be seasoned on both sides with salt and pepper on top of your vegetables. It should be about three chicken breasts or a pound. I have my little packs from Costco here and there are two in each pack, so I just opted for four. We like a lot of protein and chicken in our meals, so four turned out great and gave us just a little bit of extra chicken. You can also add some rosemary and thyme on top of that. Pour in your broth, so four cups of chicken broth, and then cover, cook on high for four to five hours or on low for seven to eight hours. I don't know what he's thinking when he rather spend his Christmas all the day with someone else. I guess he stopped thinking about me. Yeah. 
After your soup is mostly cooked, you're gonna pull out your chicken so you can shred it. And you're also going to pull out a quarter cup of the hot broth so you can add in two tablespoons of cornstarch. You need to mix that together and pour it back into the soup to help thicken it a little bit. So I am just getting all of my chicken out there. It was almost just like falling apart. I'm making that cornstarch slurry with the hot broth. I had a special guest who wanted me to pick him up again, so he's helping me, but you can see how easy it was to shred this chicken, even with one hand. It was just falling apart. It was so tender. And then I'm going to add it back into the broth, followed by my gnocchi. So you just need one package of gnocchi. I guess the standard package is 17 and a half ounces. So a 17 and a half ounce package of gnocchi. And you can also add in a cup of cream at this point, as well as your spinach, or you can wait to add your spinach until the very end. Celebrate Christmas with me. You'll see I tried a bite of it and decided to add a little bit more salt and pepper, but this creamy soup was so great. It would be a perfect side dish or a main dish. Again, very easy crowd pleaser. But I don't care. Last but not least, we had to do a dessert, so I'm making eggnog truffles. I am adding in half a cup of heavy cream to my caraway small pot there, as well as two ounces of cream cheese that's at room temperature and a tablespoon of rum. Get that cooking on your stove top until the cream cheese is melted. You don't want it to be too hot. You don't want it to boil, but it should be warm so it melts in those chocolate chips. I added 12 ounces of white chocolate chips. So you can do chopped white chocolate as well. Stir it until it is completely melted and you're gonna add in two cups of ground ginger snaps. You can either crush them yourself in a little Ziploc baggie or you could put them in your food processor. Then that mixture needs to sit in the refrigerator for two hours to get nice and cold. After you've let it sit, then you can start to roll it into balls. That should be about a tablespoon. You'll see I'm putting them on a parchment lined baking sheet. I'm using that half sheet that I mentioned that I really like because it fits into my refrigerator so well. It was the night before Christmas. I was closing down for business in my little prison shop. When the bell on the door jingled once more and then Then you're gonna take the other half of the chocolate chips, another 12 ounces, get them melted in the microwave or a double boiler, whatever you prefer, and you're going to pull out your truffles from the refrigerator, dip them and roll them around in there, back onto your parchment lined baking sheet, Sprinkle them with some cinnamon, pop them in your refrigerator one last time until you're ready to serve. They store great in the fridge or you can also save some in the freezer for even later. 